Now it's going to be on making face frame cabinets. I've been in a cabinet business, building cabinet myself for about, 30, about 25 years now. And before that I had several years of going around just installing cabinets made by commercial companies. And these are, these I'm going to show you now, these are some that I had made over the years. There's one here. There's one here. And here's some that we made for Haiti. These are all face frames piled up. So my feeling is on making face frame cabinets. It's three F's. F, F, F. Face frame first. You make the face frame, then everything else follows that face frame, because that's all the dimensions you really need. So I'm going to go and start setting up and, and show you on a face frame just how we do it. Okay, here I laid out on paper. Here's this is going to be the base cabinet here. This will be the upper cabinet. This is a frame for the upper cabinet, a frame for the lower cabinet. Now the first thing I didn't like on commercial cabinets, they had the base here and the side panel all made in one. Well when you got installing them, if you had to crawl back here and try to shim a little bit, you couldn't. So I cut mine right off here. So this panel is the same height as that right. This is 30 inches and this is 30 inches. And I make a separate base. The base, if I got four, pan, four cabinets or five cabinets, however long they are, I make the base that long. And, and then I can level the base up real nice on the floor and shim it, get it nailed on and fastened to the floor. Then I can set the base cabinets on there real fast and they all line up real good. And the other thing I, well, here I showed you before, that's 30 inches. That means my face frame here is 30 inches, 30 inches, 30. So those are all the same. But you can vary any, any one of these cabinets, anything you want. But this is a standard. And they end up to be 30, 36 inches high to the top of the counter. And you got 18 inches, then the top one comes, and the top one normally is 30 inches and that's seven feet. That's pretty standard, but you can do anything you want with them after that. You can make them just one more. Some, most of the cabinets now, they go and tear the soffits out, so you need the cabinets a little higher. So, that's to give you a good idea how I, and so I'll continue to show you just exactly how I make each part and how they go together. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how I attach the face frames to the the face frames have to be attached to the cabinets and I watched a lot of videos there and most of them what they'll do is make, they'll make, call it a carcass. They'll make it out of three quarter inch plywood and after they get the carcass all done like a box and then they'll attach the face frame to it. So several ways they do it is here glue and nail it or someone will take pocket hole screws there which is really hard to do that because you line it up so it's hard to line up and then Here's one other way here, which I just don't understand at all, because they take the face frame, they cut some pockets here for your biscuits in here, and then they cut a groove on the top of the on the top of the panel or on the edge of the panel, and then they come along and put this fit this in. You can see it how to there's a thing, there's a pot, and they put this in here and glue that, but then they have to sit, leave them set for an hour or so with clamps all the way around here, and that just takes you forever to make a panel, and I don't see any advantage to that at all. That's really a strange one. Not a commercial way of doing it, which is what I'm going to show you. This is how I make all my panels. This is a commercial panel. If you can see here, the, pan, the side panels are always half inch plywood, right here. This is a face frame. The face frame is notched and the panel slides in there. A little T nail holds it, it's glued in there tight. And the face frame now forms your whole, whole cabinet. You build off the face frame instead of trying to build a cabinet and add a face frame to it. And I'll show you how this goes along. You'll be really interested and it's a lot faster and that's the way I would say all commercial cabinets that you buy will be made with the same joint like that. So I'm going to proceed and show you how it's made. Now I use half inch side walls and half inch tops and bottoms. Everybody else is using three quarter inch. Well that adds a lot of weight to it, a lot of cost to it, 
and I just cannot see any advantage to it because I made them this way for many, many years now. Okay, now I'm going to make the face frames, which will be these frames here. And they're going to be 17 inches wide and 30 inches high. They'll both be the same, but this, this will be the bottom one I have for a drawer in here. So I need four pieces, an inch and a half by 30 inches. And I need, this is going to be 17 inches here. So here I need 14, i got to figure that out now. Okay, now enough face frames. They're 30 inches by 17. So here I got 30 by 17. Here I got 30 by 17. But I got, I'm putting a drawer in here. So the drawer is here. And I got to figure out the space here, how big of a drawer. I want four inches there. Okay, now I'm going to drill the pocket holes in this frame here. Now I've got an old jig here. I bought it from Craig. You know, it's got an air clamp on it rather than uh, I like it, but they don't make them anymore. It. I'm going to shut the camera off now and go ahead and drill the rest of them. You've seen enough drilling. Okay, now I'm going to put the pocket hole, the screws in the pocket holes. Cut the camera off and put, up, put them all together. Okay, now this is going to be a lower cabinet. So there's going to be a door in here. I mean a drawer. Now, when you put this piece in for a drawer, don't uh, don't just put a pencil mark here. Four inches. That's too wide. Well, take a piece of this, some piece of little piece of wood, and cut it exactly four or two of them, four inches. I'm going to go do that. Do that. Okay, now I got two little blocks of four inches I'm putting in there. Then I put my I'm tap that down so I know I got it tight. Sometimes I'll even put a clamp here just to make sure it's held. I don't think I'll need it there. So then I can just go in pocket hole. I mean put the pocket hole screws in. use these players that Craig sells and it'll hold, put it all right on a joint here. So I want that in there. And that goes right on a joint. There's a big pad here 
and that holds that nice and tight like that. So now I need a few more. This is a little bit loose. I'm gonna take my hammer, tighten it up there. Okay, now I got my face cavity, face frame. Okay, next step, I'll make the other face frame, and then I take, take an eighth inch round over and round over all the way. I'm gonna quit for right now. Okay, now I got them all pocket hold. So my next step. I won't show, I'm going to take my sander and I sand off the corners a little bit here like this. So I'm going to I just take an orbital sander and the camera off and route the other one. Now on the back side of the frame, right along the edge here, we need a groove cut in here. And that's where a panel fits in, the side panel. So it's a groove like this. So I got the thing set up here, so I'm going to go ahead and run it through and cut that groove. I, you can do it either after a frame is put together. If it's a small frame, if it's a large one, then I'll do these grooves here ahead of time. So I'm gonna, I got it all set up here. I'm going to bring the camera over and show you how I, how I set this up. Okay, to cut this groove in here, plywood is a little tiny bit thinner than a half inch. So they have, Rocker makes a bit, they call it undersized bit. The number is 90528. You can order it from them. And that's what I use all the time. And it works out real good. It's just a plain, make sure you get the half inch shank on it. So. Okay, now to set this up, I want it a quarter inch back here, and I want it three eighths inch high. And I just have these little blocks here measured out and set just exactly right. You can buy a set like that or made out of metal, but the wood ones work all right. It's too hard to try to use a ruler because there's a big hole there. So that's how I set it up. Okay, I'm going to run one through here and then turn the camera off. Thank you. 
here. And then your plywood just slides right into there. So real nice and snug. So I'll show you how to go together now. Now when I'm pushing them through, I like to have a, a, a push block like this that hooks onto the edge here and holds it real, real nice and tight. Okay, it's not a good idea to do it after it's put together. It's a real small one, but this was tipping over. So I usually do it while you're just one piece like this. It's very much easier. It is. Catch onto the wood here and keep it from tipping back. I just want to play out on this router. It's nothing but a piece of three quarter inch plywood and the router's bolted to the bottom of it. And nothing but a piece of board here, a couple of clamps on here. You don't need all that rigmarole. It's best not to have a steel kit out. Commercially made routers, I don't know, I never liked them because. They're not versatile enough. You can put a longer piece on here, heavier, and they just hit wood and just throw it out. And buy a new one, put a new one on. Okay, my next step now is to start making a cabinet itself. So I've got the face frame. I'm going to start just with the top one here. I've got the face frame done. So I'll need the side strip. It's going to be 12 inches deep, so the panels have to be 12 inches wide by 12, 12 wide by 30 long. So I'm going to set it up. I set it up on this bench here. I, I'm going to take this stuff off and set it all up and show you how I cut those panels. Okay, what I do now, this plywood is 48 inches wide and I need 30 by 12, 12 and 30 by 12. So I cut, cut this off at 30 inches here. So I'm going to mark it here. 30 inches. Mark it on the other side. Thirty inches. And bring this over here. And clamp that on. That's my rip guide. Now if you see what I've got here, you see, see I've got these two, two by twos underneath here so I can cut crossways and I don't cut the bench up. So I'm going to lay this on here and cut off one piece 30 inches wide. I forgot one 
paint. Safety glasses. Okay, now I got to prepare the side panels. This is a top. I have to cut a notch in there right on the very top. I have to cut one here about a certain height from the bottom. And then I have to cut this one here, and that's for the back panel. So I'm going to go ahead and cut all those because it's pretty hard to watch you cut each one. So I'll, I'll turn the camera off for a while. Okay, now I just set the router up to make this groove in here and I'm going to route that groove and show you what it looks like. Okay now I'm going to glue the side panels into the face frame. I'm going to take a... Okay now I'm going to put the glue the side panels into the... there. Pretty tight in that. Okay, then all I have to do is put a little tina right here. do is put my put the bottom and the top on there. I'll cut those and fit those in there. And then that's and put the back on it. That's it's actually done that way. Okay I'm gonna go and cut the bottom and the top. So it'd be it's like 16 by 12. So I'm gonna cut two of those and okay now I got these bottom and the top of the slop flip right in there and nail it. So I'm going to put some glue on it.
got something naturally just a riveted, overlapping. These things are far, far stronger than if you just nail them down there. And the bottom part here, I can explain to you. I'm going to put it in and then tip it up and you can see what I'm talking about. So, what I usually do first here. Hard to get those nails right on those grooves there, so I put a little mark there. Lead in my pencil. Okay, now I got a pencil with lead in it. I'm gonna put a little mark right where my goop notch here. The other side, I don't know just exactly where to put the nails, they don't go up the side. See how this slides and just like that, nice tight. Put a few nails in here. I'll put some glue in there first. And this goes in there. This is going to be the inside. And I like to take my router and just route a little edge over here, so I'll show you a little later why. This is what I showed before. I wanted that rounded off there. This is the edge of the shelf here. And you put stuff in there. You know, some, a lot of cabinets that's dropped down there. It's really hard to clean it that way. Now I just have to make a back for it. Okay, what this is for, that's actually when you, you put this in there, when you put the cabinet up against the wall, you screw that onto the wall through there. So I'm going to put some glue around it and then nail that in there.
down and put some nails in the bottom. In the bottom here. One on the bottom is very similar. And that one fits right, right in here, just a narrower one. And then you scoop underneath the shelf, jam it up like that. So I'll cut one for that. Okay, now I cut one for the, for the bottom here. And it goes right in there. Put a little glue on it. And glue that in. And that will fit fast enough to the bottom of the cabinet on the end of the cabinet. Yes. I ran out of nails, so I put some nails in here. Okay, there's the cabinets all done. Put some holes in it for shelves if you want. Now I just have to put the back on there and it's all completed. I don't even think I put a back on the knob in there. It's all grooved in here for a back and just goes on there and nailed on. But I got a piece of a piece of back and we'll put it on that way. Oh you see a completed cabinet. Okay, I don't have any quarter inch plywood laying around the smaller pieces, so, but that's what we do. We just nail in a groove there. And a lot of cabinets are made, they're up against the wall, and they don't even have a back on them. They have, didn't put backs on them for many, many years. But so you can just see that everything else is it's, it's complete. It's all there. You can see how fast it needs to make. And what do you do? These things are so solid and strong. I think they're far better than any of those one three quarter inch plywood on there where all those pocket hole screws and all kinds of stuff like that. And I think this is a far neater way. And this is the way the commercial companies make them for years. I looked at about a, 50 of them yesterday in one store and every single one of them made a damn I was just reviewing this and there's one area there I had my back to you. But right after I put this into the groove, then I take some Air nails and put them, the short one, right into that side there, and that holds that face frame into that groove there. Okay, now we're going to make the base cabinet here. And the base cabinet is 30 inches high. Remember, I don't use a, I use a separate base, so I'm cutting it off right here. Other cabinets that panel would go down, but that's too hard to handle that way. So I need two pieces 30 inches by 24. Now plywood is 20, 48 inches wide, so that means if I cut off a piece of plywood 30 inches and then split it, and I get two 24 inch panels on it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, there's my two panels, so I'm going to get ready with the frame. And but first, I want to talk about attaching frames to the cabinet itself. Okay, before I start that one, I want to talk a little bit about face frames. Everybody's making a box and then they're trying to attach a face frame to it. So there's so many different ways of trying to do it here. They're trying to nail it, but they all got three quarter inch plywood. There's another one here. They're using pocket holes. Well, that's a lot of work. And here's one here that I think is a more work ever because they'll take the fr frame and they'll cut biscuits in it and they'll cut a, again three quarter inch plywood they'll set a slot in here and this is supposed to go on like that with glue on there and then they come along with all kinds of clamps on here which takes about a half an hour just for one to glue up and dry it 
So I'm going to show you how I do it with, I say, face frame first. You make the face frame, I got the face frame, whatever I want, I tip it over, and I got it grooved on here, and that's where the side panels will fit right onto there. Now you see how I did it on, on the low upper, upper cabinet, and it's the same way here, so I'm going to start, just go ahead and start gluing up some of the stuff. Okay, you can see I got the panel dropped in that groove there. I'm going to attach my cabinet to the face frame. And I just put a three quarter inch T nail right in that little edge. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off and do the next one, tip it over. So the next one I'm going to have to make a, this is going to be the top of the cabinet, I have to make a panel for the top there. So I'm going to measure that out and go cut one. So I need exactly 16 by 23 and a quarter. So I'm going to go cut the camera off while I cut that. Okay, now I got this panel cut here, so I'm going to put some glue on here. I'm going to turn the camera off while I do that, because you've seen it done before. And this will put the top on there. Okay, now I'll put in this bottom block on here. It's, it's just what we anchor to the wall from. And also, this being a bottom cabinet, we want it a little bit wider there because this could be a sink basin that way. That way we caulk around here and we can seal up and get the water down there and you know, get it down through the floor. here and you see it back there. What I do, if this is going to be a sink base, I will take and caulk this with silicone caulking all the way around here and up in here and make sure this is all sealed up tight here. Just in case they get water in there, it's not going to go down on the floor. They can save it that way. I don't mean save the water, but it doesn't get into the floor that way. Okay, now I put these, I call them pads, but they're angled. What they are is to stabilize this top, so this top is always square, and it's not going to go out of square when you're moving around and installing them and stuff like that. And their main purpose is just to steady it, and then there's also, you can see a lot of times these big, big base cabinets, and there'll be a sink in here. And if there's a sink in there, and counters and stuff like that, there's some place where the counters are set on. You don't have a hollow spot there. But you, you just need them for stability. Stability is a word I'm trying to think of. And so, you now here, this is a base cabinet. And it's not very heavy. I can lift this cabinet up and handle it real easy. The three quarter inch plywood just adds a lot of weight to it and I don't see any reason for the weight. Okay, here's just a sample of a small, there's a face frame here. But sometimes you want to put a chrome molding or something like that on, on top here. You can always make this top, top part as wide as you want and it's attached to the face frames. Now if you can see how I make this base, I just take a base of three quarter inch lumber depending on how high you want the base. This is three inches high and I just notch out here with the same router bit as I do for all the other stuff and then I can put layers of plywood on this. So I'll shut the camera off and show you how I lay that up. You know if you can see here's a piece here and that's on the bottom and this is on the top so when you lay it down this is where you screw, screw or nail this to the floor. 
and this is a corner here, so this is where you have a wider area that fits on here. Now let me set that up for you too. Okay, now you can see. See, I've got a over overhanging three inches here and three inches in front. That way you can make this base for how many cabinets you want to set on it. This is a corner here, so you start with the corner, set that back, and then you can just screw pretty much any place along here inside to uh, hold the cabinet down onto the base. There's the two cabinets, the base cabinet, the base, and the upper cabinet. Okay, now I want to show you the best way to fasten these panels, these cabinets together, one to another. Now remember, I got an upper cabinet and a lower one, and they usually don't do that. But I'm sure, but they're still uh, fastened together the same. I just take a drill. You need a drill that's got a, a countersunk on here right away because you want to countersink those screws first. So you, you, you want some separation here before you go because you don't want to drill into the second one here. Okay, that's a three up there. I want to get a couple clamps. Okay, now I got a couple clamps on here. I usually take a block of wood and hold it across here, or even all the way through, just there. So then I can go ahead and put the screws in. off and in the upper cabinets you also have the plate here as you screw to the wall. <coughs> now the reason I when I make these frames I put a little eighth inch round over on here. See now that round over is here it gives you it's kind of a little trim here that goes in there. If you have just a flat piece on there, I'm gonna go get a piece I gotta show you. See if you have a flat piece on there you wouldn't have that little groove there sometimes one could use a hair off and you could feel that like that so I like this joint real well that's what I use all the time well that's about it for my base cabinet and the upper cabinet thank you for watching now I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about these uh, job site table saws something down through the years I don't know who did the de decision here, but here's an older one. I bought one about 20 years ago, and it was a Delta, and it had an 8 inch blade in it. It worked real nice. And this is a Sears one with an 8 inch blade. It's probably old, it works very nice. So, who came along and decided I needed a 10 inch blade? This great big blade here on a little tiny saw like that. It was never ever intended for that. And, how that came about, I don't know. Because on a seven and a quarter inch blade, I can cut through a two by four. The eight inch blade, I would, on two cuts, I can go to a, a three by, we call it a four by four, but it's three and a half by three and a half. And it was a real nice saw, very safe, very good. And now with that big 10 inch blade on there, they're just a wicked monster. I'm trying to get everybody to get that blade off of there because it does not belong on a small saw like this. These are real nice saws for hobbyists and say like that, but you put that big blade on there and that scares them to death. I had one guy tell me that, bought the saw like that and he tried it and he said, I don't even want to turn that thing on again. It's so noisy. It roars like everything and a great big blade. He took the blade off, put the seven and a quarter inch blade on. He's building all kinds of stuff with it. 
Now I just laid out all the tools that I used to build these two cabinets there and you can see there's not very many tools. Most shops could gather those tools up in a hurry and you can make a lot of stuff, a lot of furniture, I mean cabinets and all kinds of stuff. Now I'm going to go and show you the table saw and the miter saw that I use for this. Okay, this is my table saw. It's just a small job site saw. It's a very nice one, and uh, but I may only use a seven and a quarter inch blade on it. That's all you need. One is in a great while. I might put a ten inch blade on it, but never. I mean, an eight inch blade, but never ever a ten inch blade. You should never use a ten inch blade on a job site saw. And then over here, so I got a nice little little uh, miter saw. It's only a seven and a quarter inch blade on it, but it'll still cut through a two by four. I like it real well. And what you need is a miter saw. You need them high, you know, not chest high almost. So you can just look right down. If you get them down table height, they're too low, you're bending way over and trying to cut with them. What I forgot to mention is I don't show a compressor here because I have a big shop compressor, but you would need a, need a compressor to operate the nailers.